also want to wish uh, the mother of our church, Mother Carter, Happy Mother's Day. Amen. 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 As she looks over us and prays for us. Amen. Amen. It's a wonderful thing. Now, normally, I always had a woman, and this, this is the second time that I'm actually preaching Mother's Day, and God has that in store. Amen. Amen. But I'm always looking for someone um, to bring this particular message. And so when the Lord shows it to me, I will definitely reach out to that particular individual. Amen? Amen. It's preaching time. Right. Turn to the book of Exodus, the second chapter. And we stand always to reverence the word of God. Amen? Amen. There's power in the word of God. Amen. Are we there? Exodus chapter 2. We are at verse 1. Amen. From the King James it says, And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. She had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew woman, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. I want to talk from the subject. Sometimes you have to let them go. Sometimes you have to let them go. Amen. Father God, I pray that you look to the world, leave me until I'm done. You understand this is a magnitude of the assignment way more than I do. Allow me to preach your word and not mine. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Sometimes you have to let them go. Now, I wanted to get on a series with Moses anyway, and this is a great jump off point. Because there's a lot in the story to unpack. But being that this is Mother's Day, I think it was very appropriate for mothers as well as fathers. But we have a situation here. The situation is that Israel is getting too big. And the Egyptians want to put a halt to that. And so the decree is to kill all the male. I know people think that women seem to populate the earth, but it is not that way. Amen. If there is not a man, there is no population or populating happening. And that's what Egypt knew. So the decree was to kill all the male born babies so that these Israelites will not grow any bigger. But that's not what was happening because 
the children kept being born, right? And Egypt was mad at the, the midwives, and the midwives were saying that, hey, they're they not like y'all. They had babies on their own. And we know they was lying. But they were trying to protect the babies. That's a motherly instinct, right? So, Moses' mother hid him for as long as she could. But the doors kept being knocked on and the houses kept being searched because they wanted to kill all male born babies. So, how much strength, how much faith do you have to have in God to let your child go? Here's a situation where she wasn't only letting him go, she was putting him in a basket on the river. Now, y'all know a little bit about the rivers up here because you know the Susquehanna is here. And the Susquehanna can be a raging monster or a gentle stream. So for a mother to get to the point where she can no longer protect her child. And she comes to the decision that it's better for me to let him go. And whatever happens, happens. Because you can't, you, can't, you can't determine that she put that baby in the water because she knew it was going to go to somebody. She just didn't want to see her baby killed. She didn't want to see him violently killed. And she didn't want to put her eyes on this murder. And so she felt the only way to save her son was to put him in God's hand. They knew who God was. They understand who God was. And so she put him in a basket and allowed her sister to follow. So you know that the mother cared and it hurt her to do it. But she said, look, keep an eye on that basket and tell me what happens to the basket. Because either way, Moses was going to be what? Dead. Either at the hands of Pharaoh or the hands of who? God. Because he controls what? All things. And so, in the process, this baby Three months old, in a basket, just floating. Sister travels along, and for some reason, the current takes her inside, him inside, at the same time that one of Pharaoh's daughters has come to bathe. That divine, divine, see, see God knows the situation. He understands, but do we understand enough to let him go, to let her go? Or are we afraid? Because the, 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 the reality is that if she had a kept him, he would have died. Because you can't hide him but for so long. And so she had to have enough faith to let him go, to say whatever happens will happen but God, I'm putting them in your hands. So now it's interesting because the same people that are trying to kill him ends up being the same ones who save him. See, Pharaoh's daughter knew what the decree was. And she knew that this baby was a Hebrew. But yet... I love the word, but she had what? Compassion. The enemy has compassion. But everybody who you think is the enemy, is not the enemy. So you can't treat people the same because they come from somebody. 
Because there is good in everybody. The right moment just has to come up for them to see. So we know that she had compassion. Now watch how God weaves this though, right? Because he's already orchestrating this. So you think that, 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 that our God don't know what's going on. You think that your child leaving. He, God, God, I don't know what's going to happen. So you, have you done your part? Have you done all you supposed to do, mama? Have you brought them up right? Have, have you taught them the ways of the Lord? And do you live rightly the same ways that you taught? Because if you do, then you have done all that you can do. No matter how long you hold on to them, if you don't let them go, you're going to kill them. They're going to die. Because they're not going to experience what life has to offer or to put your teaching in practice. And the one thing about this one is at this moment in life, Moses had even had the, 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 the privilege to be taught by his mother, you know, but understand that God knows what mothers are supposed to do. And so he's orchestrated this thing that is a miracle in and of itself that he put, she, he allowed her to put the baby in the water and then come right at the same time that Pharaoh's daughter was taking a bath and she saw him, she recognized the, the clothing, she recognized this is one of the children that is a male born that we are killing right now, but when she saw the baby, she had compassion, not only did she have some compassion, she knew she didn't have the capacity to raise this child and so now this daughter, this other backup part that God has in place, comes along and says, look, I know someone or I'll find someone who can nurse. Because it was practiced that the Egyptian women would have babies, but the Hebrew women were the nurses. And so she goes back to who? The mother who did what? Let them go. Because when you let them go and let God, they come back. Oh, come on, mothers. Come on. Come on. Because some of y'all are always worried about what my child going to do. What are you going to be? And we always helping out when we shouldn't. Because the more help we do, the more we hurt. Because we enable them to keep coming back and not learn for themselves. Because we don't want to see them in pain. But this mother let him go so he wouldn't die. But when she let him go, God reversed the situation took the enemy who had compassion on him and brought the child back to her to nurse and to feed and to grow and to teach everything that God had given her. And then when she uh, had done all she could do and she knew that now he was old enough, she had to do what again? Let him go. But let him go prepared. Amen? So the situation is quite simple. Mothers, fathers, do all you can do while you can do it. Establish your faith in God. And then when the moment arrives, you got to make a choice. Let them go or let them die. The animal kingdom, they got it figured out. They raise them for a certain amount. They, they, they bring them food. They do everything they got to do. They teach whatever it is. They show them how to hunt. They show them how to do whatever it is so that they can survive. But when they get a certain point, you don't see them holding on. Matter of fact, if, if a bird don't want to go, he get nudged out the nest. I've done all I can do. Now you need to flap your wings. Now you need to check out your own hunting skills. You got to do what it takes 
to survive. And they never find out unless you let them go. We got to let them go. I told my son, I said, look, I'm your father. You got to do what I tell you to do. But once they get to a certain age, I'm your advisor. I never stop being your father. And being a father means I got to love, and that love is hard. Sometimes mamas need to catch a hold. Because mama don't want their babies out in the streets. Mama don't want that. Mama, I get it, but sometimes we got to let them go. Because as long as you keep covering them and keeping them, they don't know what's going on. They don't know how to handle life situations. That's why we got so many suicides and stuff like that going on now, because people don't know how to handle setbacks. Well, huh? it's hard out here. Yeah, it's hard. Do something about it. Yeah, but they ain't paying me nothing. Well, go to a place that can pay you more or sharpen up your own skills. Create your own business. Create your own. We got to teach them this, that you don't have to settle for less when God has given you the best. He's gifted us. He's anointed us. But yet, we keep falling short. And then parents, we keep coming in and bailing them out. Sometimes, let them fall so they can get back up. We were talking about the prodigal son this morning in Sunday school. And the prodigal son, the, one, the, the, the youngest said, Lord, I, 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 he, Daddy, give me everything. I'm, I'm tired of this. I don't want none of this. Man, don't mention the mama, but you know the mama was there because in that area, the mama was always there. But the mama did not interfere. And she let her baby go. And her baby went out there and exploited everything. Got to the point he was broke homeless, destitute, and hungry. Found himself eating where the pigs eat. Then all that home training came back to mind. Knowing that, wait, 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 wait. I ain't got to live like this. Because see, one thing you got to understand is when you let your child go, they'll grow. And when they grow, they develop this thing called pride. And pride keeps them from humbling themselves. Because they want to show you or they want to prove even when they're doing wrong, they keep going deeper and deeper until they get to a point where they bottom out. Why does God have to bottom you out? Because then and only then can you hear from God. Because all the other distractions are gone. And now you on the bottom. And so once you on the bottom, your mind is now clear. And it's like, I ain't got to eat like this. My father got servants. It eat better than me. So if I humble myself, I, look, you know what? I, I, I said you didn't know what you was talking about, mama and daddy, but, but I, I've been on the road for a little while and I realized y'all had more sense than I thought you had. And so he had to go back home and the, the greatest part about it, and the story don't even get into it, but when the daddy saw him, he was overjoyed. But when the daddy saw him, that also meant the mama saw him. I, I, I just want y'all to hear, look, just because you don't see it in the text, you got to understand the implications that she was excited when her baby came home, but he could only come home if she let him go. Sometimes the father said, well, let him go. And the mama said, no, that's my baby. That baby ain't going nowhere. And it creates a diversion or division within the household and the child plays off of the divisiveness. But when the mama lines up with the father, she doesn't lose herself. She has the same value as the father. Even though she's silent, she's loud. But this world, they say, yes, I, no, you got to speak out. You got to show your voice. You got to say, but the, law, the, the Bible declares that the two shall become what? So they should work in unison. If they work in unison, then she doesn't diminish who she is. She has equal footing with him because they are a unit in Christ. 
Sometimes you got to let them go and get out of the way and let God do what he's going to do. Just make sure you've done your part. See, I can see if you let them go and you unprepared them. You unprepared her. They're not ready because you kept lying. You kept saying that everything's going to be all right. You keep getting participation trophies. You keep getting high fives just for showing up, even though you ain't done nothing. You didn't give them that license and they failing in school. You getting them a car, they got freedom and they ain't doing nothing at the crib. So they not learning about, as a matter of fact, when stuff happens, uh, you allow them to still have their necessities. Because you ain't pulled nothing back because you're saying that life is always going to work in your favor. Stop lying. Life will not work in your favor. And you can't get out there in the world and get away with the same stuff you've been getting around here with. They always say, well, little Johnny, he's going to grow out of it. And all little Johnny on his way to jail. Because you won't correct. You won't discipline. You won't let them go. It's a problem if you got a grown man still living in your house in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> it's a problem when they don't know how to fend for themselves. It's a problem when they're doing wrong and you don't call it out. Teach them. That's why I'm so crazy about this world now. They talk about, you know, this whole child and this transgender or gender situation and these pronouns. Heck, I, I had a hard time learning nouns. I definitely don't know all the pronouns. I'm not an English major. <laughs> but if you sit there and tell a child that you don't know what he is, he'll have a chance to figure it out. You don't absolutely lost your mind. Well, I don't want to define his gender. Well, <laughs> what is your job, mama? What is your job, daddy? Yeah, but I don't want to offend. What is your job, mama? What is your job? Because one day you got to let them, but that's why ain't nobody letting them go. Little Johnny wearing a dress, it's okay, he'll be fine. Teach. Help them to learn and understand. If not, you got a problem. We follow the word of God. Not the word of mankind. The church is the church. It's not the world. We can't operate the same way and expect God to bless. So I'm so glad that in this particular moment when there was a tragedy that was laying before this mother, she realized that I'd rather God have something with him than man. She let him go. He brought him back. She let him go again. He came back again. <laughs> Why? It becomes learned behavior. See, because she had raised him so well, because she let him go, when it came to the point where he seen the injustice between Egypt and his own people, he even killed a man. Because he felt like there's nowhere in the world anybody should be treated. Because he still knew who he was. Why? Because his mama taught him. Don't believe that stuff you see on the Ten Commandment mess. And they, you know, he, he was all, he, he just came to this conclusion all of a sudden. No. His mama raised him. Walk right back into Pharaoh's house, being equipped as a Hebrew, and one day will come back and do what? Rescue God's people. You don't know who your child is going to be. But you'll never know if you don't let them go. They got to figure it out for themselves. 
Your job is to teach and instruct. And, and, and by all means, stop trying to be friends. When you're teaching and when you're instructing, you be the mama and daddy. Once they grown, you can be a friend. You can be an advisor. They call you up and check. Hey, man, what do you think about this? Let me tell you what you need to do. But all you can do is tell them. They still got to make the decision. And then when they make the decision, it's like, all right, that's your choice. If that's your choice, you got to live with that. So when they fail because they went against your advice, you'd be like, yeah, I can't help you on that. You need to see how that's going to work it out. You said, I, you asked my advice. I gave you the advice. You felt like this the way you ought to go. I think as a man or a woman, you got every right to do that. But when it falls short, I'm not the blanket. Why? Because I warned you. So if I become the blanket, then every time I warn you from something and you go against it and then you mess up, you keep wanting to, you know, your little boppy. You want that comfort of mom and dad. And you keep doing all you keep doing, right? I, I, I wish the story had continued on the prodigal son because I want to understand what happened after he was received in with his great fanfare. Then what happened? Now, the Bible don't declare anything else anymore. But if I go through the imagination, this person either came in and learned or quickly forgot and repeated the same thing over and over again. How do I know this? Because we do the same thing. God blesses us and we forget. We got a short memory because it's like, well, what have you done for me lately? Don't worry about stuff for you lately. But I, what did I do for you before? If I carry you then, I can carry you now. But you got to walk with me. Mamas, let them go. Daddies, let them go. Mama and daddy, be unified. In all the decisions in your household, to discipline, to not discipline. And there are times when, when daddy wants to discipline their mama, just be quiet. Yeah, but I don't want it. Just remember, y'all walking this one. If you do got an issue with what's going down, then y'all go to y'all private spot and you talk about it. And I will stand together. But even if you stand divided, don't interfere. Why? Because sometimes you got to let them go. If you let them go, God got them. But Fred, what if God take them out? God still got them. Did you put enough in? Because see, sometimes people make some mistakes that you can't come back from. And here's where that whole grief and recover comes to play. And my mama's, and I need all y'all to listen to that. Everything's not going to work in your favor. Just make sure you do everything that you can do. So if the outcome is not the way you would hope for it to be, you don't lose yourself in the process. Because if something should happen that's tragic, and you haven't done what you are supposed to do, you're going to carry a weight that you are not meant to bear. That's why you pour everything in right now. So when something should happen, because I got three boys. The world don't like them. They already go out there with three strikes. Not even two. They got three. So they're already under the fire of this world. Say one thing wrong and they could be completely canceled out. Or if you go out there in places where you have no business being, you can also be canceled out. And you can't come back from that. So teach. Let them go. Let them do. And prayerfully, they do come back. Because when you let them go, it don't mean you stop what? Praying. Love always going to be there. Why? Because you mama. You know, he, you, you love your child and you know he a piece of the worst thing possible. But not to the mama. That ain't my, you know why? Because you still see the baby that you birthed. 
And the baby that you birth is not this thing that's out here right now. Right? But you got to understand that they got to be their own person. And they're going to make, I made a mistake. I'm, by the grace of God, I'm standing before y'all right now. God kept me. Why? Because they let me go, but they also kept me in prayer. And they put enough in me that allowed me not to go over the waterfall. I would always catch myself at the cliff talking about, I can hear my mother and my father. I'm like, now plus, I knew who the Lord was. I'm like, yeah. Ugh. I'm going to pass on that. Y'all go do that. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I see an outcome that I don't like, so therefore now, if I didn't have no upbringing, no training, no knowledge of God, trust me, I'd have been over that waterfall. I told y'all, trying to be in the music business, you had to go over some waterfalls. And I'm like, uh, yeah, nah, man, I'm good. I need to make it on my own merit, on my own sound, on my own voice, on, on my stuff. If I can do it that way, I can hold my head high. But if I got to bend and bow to make it and I got a shucking job or I got to do the dirt with you to get there, yeah, I'll back off, man. But you ain't going to be successful? Well, I'll, I'll take no success. Because all money, so y'all know that, see? Mama taught you well. It may seem good. It may look good. But it got strings attached to that puppy. You know, we find that out now. You listen to all this stuff on, on TV, news, social media, about all the stuff going on, about the money and how to get there. And yeah, trust me, you're learning. So on this Mother's Day, I want to wish all y'all happy Mother's Day. But as you're raising them, let them go. If you've already raised them and they're already old enough, let them go. Be there for support. Be there to encourage. Never knock them out. Never take them out. Just, just I, I, allow them to know that's, that's not right. You shouldn't go that way. That's a mistake. Yeah, but what if they don't like me? So what? You are their parent. <laughs> you didn't have them to like you. You needed them to love you. See, there's a difference between love and like. Love understands chastisement. Like don't. Like be like, well, forget y'all. I ain't talking to you no more. Okay, go on about your business then. And then mama turn around and say, hey, baby, I'm just calling to check on you. I know you ain't answering my call, but I know you got a voicemail, so let you know I love you. All right, I'll talk to you. Bye-bye, baby. I ain't calling her back. That's all right. Next week come, hey, this your mama. I'm just calling to check on her. I want to make sure you're all right. Uh, your voicemail's still working, so I know you're paying the bill, so it sounds like you're all right to me. So God bless you, and I'll talk to you later. Weeks go by, months go by, years go by. Hey, baby, this mama. I'm just checking in on you. I'm glad your, your phone's still on so I know the bill's still paid. Or I seen you on Facebook so I know you're alive. <laughs> That's love. See, if you like your child, the minute they cross you, you cross them. You're like, well, I have, don't call here. Don't talk to me no more. See, that's what they should be in Sunday school, right? Learn about forgiveness, right? Learn about how fact that your purpose has to be in your circumstances. So, therefore, I'm not going to allow you to dictate how I treat. That's why you let him go. That's why she let him go. And he became the salvation of a people. All because she let him go. If she'd have kept him, we don't have this story. So ultimately, here's a pop quiz. <laughs> Who's in charge? God is. Your child, he only gave him to you for a minute. Let him go. He don't belong to you. He belongs to God. God charged you to raise them. The Bible says, train them up. Right? Then let them go. I never seen a coach teach and coach and coach and coach and never let his student go. You got to let them go. So they can put all that stuff into practice. But if, if they're going wrong, when you raise them, correct it. You a boy. <laughs> you a girl. I told you, when you a blank slate, nobody knows what they are. I don't know I'm a male until somebody points all that stuff out to me. I'm trying to figure out, what's this thing down there? 
I don't know. It's just there. Right? And then the girl comes up, I ain't got nothing down there. Well, you got something. But if they don't ever know and you don't ever tell them, they can become anything they want to become. That's not who they are. So we are to teach. Then let them go. God got them. Because he created them. He says, I carefully knit and put you together inside your mama's womb. God don't make mistakes. People say, well, you know, I was born this way. No, you was just born. He wasn't born away. He was born and then you was taught a different way. Nobody want to hear that kind of stuff. Tell Rev, you hate you, 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 you. No, I ain't I'm just teaching. And if you know the word of God, you ought to be able to identify with what I'm saying. But if you're so caught up in your feelings and stuff like that, you're like, yeah, well, he don't know what he's talking about. Baby, go on, wear that dress. Girl, if you want to be dude, be a dude. It's, it's all good. If you don't like your sex, change it. I, I don't care how many surgeries you perform, you can't change who you are. Because it ain't in your anatomy. Johnny, you get in trouble in school? All right, don't worry about it. Just get, keep, you know, you'll, you'll grow out of it. Then when he fails, he in the streets, all is well. Teach. That's the God's given responsibility. From the garden. He charged man to teach. Gave a woman as a helpmate to teach. It's hard enough when this thing by yourself. But if you got two together, use them. And be unified in your speech. Because if you're not, that's going to create division in your household. And that's a part of that messed up stuff that we all go through now because we're trying to be liked versus loving. God loves us, and he also chastens us. God loves us. When we're doing something wrong against him, he wears us out until we recognize and we humble ourselves and go back to the Father. So if God is willing to let us go, how come mama ain't willing to let us go? So if you really want to be a true mother, do everything while you can. And then when you've done all that you can, do yourself a favor. Let him go. Let him go. Let her go. Let her go. And let God do what he going to do. Amen. Towards the church open this morning.